So um, I guess the first question I would ask is, um, how, um, how did you hear about the filming of Lewis and Cowboys, and what were your expectations when you actually went to the site to, to photograph? Uh, I, I was a, uh, a studio photographer at the Arizona Republic, and that means that if they needed some pictures taken here in Tucson, they would call on me. And uh, so they called me up and said that Andy Warhol was out in Tucson. So I'd go out there and photograph whatever, whatever I can uh, gather together. So I went out there in my 65 Mustang in 1968. And uh, I was expecting some kind of security. Maybe they wouldn't allow me to right. take certain pictures. But I was thrown out of old Tucson many times. I, I like to photograph uh, you know, movie sets, but the, yeah. The union photographers would always throw us out. But. Right. So I got to the set at Old Tucson. Basically, it's a series of old buildings. Most of the buildings are just fronts for, for movie sets. Yeah. There's two fours and plywood. How far away is that from here? So Let's say about uh, 23 miles. Okay. Um, so did you notice when you went to Old Tucson, this, um, I mean, was the contrast evident to you when you sort of happened upon the Warhol crowd? Um, like, what were your first impressions of them against this sort of desert backdrop? I actually, I don't think they knew I was there. Oh, they, really? They were very unconcerned. You know? Yeah. I was very discreet at first when I was shooting, and I was, you know, afraid maybe I'd get thrown out. But yeah. as, as time went on the day, I moved in a little yeah. closer. And, so you were just shooting, and they were just doing their thing, and just kind Well, of... I don't think they had a script. Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think they just kind of made it up as they yeah. went along. Yeah, I read accounts of um, them saying that there was there might have been a script in New York, but by the time they actually made it out there, it, you know, it, it was gone. So if, even if they had one, yeah, I wasn't there by then. Well, a lot of the scenes that they photographed were never used in the movie. Really? I'd say they could probably make a complete uh, yeah. movie at the end of, yeah. you know, the floor clippings or the stuff they didn't use. So did you notice there were, if there was anything, I've read accounts of there being sort of the standalone behavior of the actors. Um, you know, doing like, I guess, enacting sort of lascivious acts or sort of spoofing on Westerns in a way that wouldn't necessarily be expected um, to yeah. audience members who were expecting to see sort of like this generic Western being shot. Um, if you've noticed anything like that. I I'm not sure if this is true or not, but yeah. this is what I heard and pieced mm -hmm. together that uh, Old Tucson did not like the they were doing late in the afternoon yeah. and decided to kick them out. Right. Now, I'm not saying that's absolutely true, yeah. but... I've heard the same thing. That's why they moved on to Rancho Linda Vista. Right. And so, did you go to Linda Vista? Yes, I went to Linda Vista the okay. next day. So, are, are you doing a thesis on a Dissertation. Yeah. A dissertation. Yeah. So, I have a chapter um, on censorship, actually, and um, in post, uh, about 1967-68, this film, well, so Cowboys is interesting to me not only because of the fact that it spurned this sort of FBI file on him, but because um, it was actually seized, it was, it was screened in Atlanta, and it was seized by uh, the police there as, as obscene. And the only reason um, Warhol didn't get uh, have to go to trial is because it was actually seized um, due to prior restraints. So they, they, it was seized illegally. So um, it was never actually brought to trial, but it was uh, considered, you know, pornographic. And so um, I'm interested in uh, really how audiences perceive this film outside of, um, like New York had some censorship problems, but most of the censorship came from places outside. And I'm gonna chime in for one second and I'll let you keep going, but you know, Bob didn't miss everything that was out there because if you look at some of those images, yeah, the, there's some pantsless men. There's some yeah, pantsless there. men and Joe <laughs> D'Alessandro and the yeah, dude up there. Yeah. Of, uh, yeah, those didn't go into the magazine. So you were you were there for you were there you were there for little hanky panky, and I know for sure you were there when the boys were wrestling around because I've seen you in the video. Yes, so I don't know what you know. But uh, you know, I saw that happening and said that this time you take off, right. uh, you know. The yeah. public's not going to like this stuff. It's true. Well, I'm glad you say the negatives, though. Cause I think they were in a uh, kind of semi-fireproof uh, security box for 42 years. Yeah, so how did, how did, you, how did you finally, I mean, how did this happen? How did, how did you yeah. finally get to Eric, well, out? Eric Crowell called yeah. me up. I don't know how he found out yeah. that. And uh, asked me if I had pictures of Andy Warhol. So were you planning on having these images published? Well, I uh, completed my assignment for the Republic. They mm -hmm. used uh, oh, five or six small mm -hmm. pictures. I had no cover. Oh. 
Well, one scene I remember that Warhol did, put the camera in the middle of old Tucson and walked around the camera six or eight times in a complete circle. You know, around and around and around and around. And around. And only in one direction. I don't know what his editing process was. Um, I know that Warhol was known for sort of letting the camera run out of film, like just putting it on something. But now Paul Morrissey was involved with this film, so I don't know how much input he had in terms of what was being filmed. Um, in, a, in Warhol's book, Popism, he talks about how uh, he edited the film himself. After he had been shot, he edited it at home while he was in recovery. Um, I don't you know, you know what year he was shot? He was shot in 1968, so 68. it was, it was so this, June. This was, this was the last film movie he filmed. He actually did some footage in Hoya, California, um, a surfing movie that was supposed to be a sequel to this. Well, not a sequel, but yeah, like, it was the same. Yeah, it was the same sort of crowd. But uh, that never got edited. This is the last film that he actually released um, or edited um, right after he got shot. So this is this is considered his last film before the shoot. This film also won an award at the San Francisco Film Festival. The same, uh -huh, the same year that it was seized for obscenity in Atlanta. So it's one of those films that um, it can be read a lot of different ways. And I feel like well, there's so many photographs of Warhol. Like, there's so many, and they've all been sort of picked over and reproduced. And everyone thinks they know the story, you know. And it's it's really really rare to find stuff that sort of tells a new story. Yeah. Oh wait, so Warhol tried to buy or was interested in buying some of these shots, right? Actually. When I was in old Tucson, uh, David Bordon, 23 mm -hmm. or 28, or, mm -hmm. uh, I guess that was his co author mm -hmm. came up to me and he said, uh, I like what you're shooting, and uh, could you uh, send us a set of proofs to Life magazine, and here's my card. So I did that. He showed the, the proofs to uh, Warhol, and then Warhol sent me a letter. As a matter of fact, the letter's back here. Right. Yeah. War, war, I sent him a price list and Warhol said that pictures are too expensive. Well, 42 years later, things changed and, and I, I definitely made a blunder on that one. I should have traded our board. He probably would have went down to the basement and found some rejects that he yeah. probably would have thrown in the garbage. Yeah. But then those photos would just be amongst the piles of photos that are in the Warhol archive and now they've been sort of rediscovered in this new sort of aura of well, as I said, they've been they in storage for 42 yeah, years. Yeah, it's really great. It's like opening your own time. Glad yeah. somebody found them. Yeah. Wait, wait uh, you know, another 20 years, it might not be around. <laughs> That's true.